you. And also, also with you. you. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord, to worship Him, to thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for being with us in all moments, every moment in our life. Today we celebrate in the Christian Church the second Sunday in Advent. The printed order of service is here, and we follow this order of service. Please note that the first hymn, uh, 338, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. It, we will be using the melody of hymn 583 just for you to know. A uh, few announcements before we begin. Uh, we have in the bulletin the, the list of those who have been elected for the council for next year. You could see those who are being elected here at, uh, at Grace. We have Ken and Mike as our elders, and trustees Sharon, Jean, and there have been others uh, that who have been elected, but they are from, from faith. And anyway, so the list is here for you to know. So we ask the Lord for to help these members that have been with, working with us, to guide them and protect them and use them in God's kingdom. I just, I'd like to remind you about the, the Christmas evening, Christmas day here at, at Grace. The capacity here of the sanctuary is only 25 people, and we need you to call ahead of time. Uh, at what time? You, well, when you're going to be able to come, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, you need to call to 519-685-9700. So we have a little bit of people for for Christmas Day. So, but anyway, Christmas Eve we have a, a good amount of people that we almost reach in 20 now. Um, Other oh, announcement that for this week we have the elders meeting at 7 p.m. on Monday at Faith. All the, the elders are welcome to participate. And then on Tuesday we have the council meeting. So as well, you are welcome to participate in the meeting. And we have Faith Advent Service uh, in London at 7 p.m. that you are welcome to attend if you would like to, to, well, to be part of that service. Again, thank all for being with us this morning and to those who are watching us from, from home and the visitors who are with us. And Londa is with us this morning and she's a member from Whitby, Lutheran Church in Whitby. And I think that that's that area where you live. And now she's living in Comoca. Mm -hmm. It's very close, so she's attending here with us. Okay, so we are ready to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please rise and let us begin with a silence prayer. Thank you. 
I just want to, if you give to Lord London uh, a radio of your service. Ah, okay. Let us begin. So we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the lighting of the Advent candle. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Let your light scatter the darkness and illuminate your church. The second candle lit is known as the candle of peace. This candle reminds us Jesus came to bring us spiritual peace and, is, and he is known as the Prince of Peace. We sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Two verses.
stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us hear God's word at this moment. lesson for the second Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah 40. The 40th chapter can be found in the printed order of service. This reading begins with the words, comfort, comfort, and then points to the voice in the desert announcing the good news of the coming of one who will be like a shepherd caring for his flock. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her welfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she can receive from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry, and I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord God will stand forever. Go up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good news. Lift it up. Fear not, says the cities of Judah. Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Second Peter, the third chapter can be found in the order of service. When the Bible says Jesus is coming soon, we have to remember that God's time schedule is different from ours. He will come in his own time, and things will change radically. Recognizing that we live temporarily, lives in a temporary world, surely should influence the way we live day by day. The word of the Lord from 2 Peter chapter 3. But, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should repent. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with the Lord, and the heaven, the bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what part of people, what, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hasting, the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promises, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent 
to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness, and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his, wa his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please rise and let us confess our Christian faith, speaking the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with him 511. We're going to be doing in two parts. Before the sermons, two verses, and after the sermons, the other two verses. You may be seated. <laughs>
peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, one of the duties of a pastor is to preach God's word to the people. But sadly now in our times, preaching has become a loathsome word. Nobody wants to be preached to anymore. And it, and it would seem that, that the church is in trouble because nobody wants to hear preachers anymore. People want to hear something else, but not about Jesus and about sins. Many preachers do not have the fire and the gods of John the baptizer. We have failed to be a prophetic preacher, to speak the word of God at the risk of offending or at the risk of not being new and fresh and entertaining. We have failed because we are afraid of making people unhappy or uncomfortable or calling them out of their comfortable views into the wilderness. But you better understand that God does send preachers. That is his mode of operation. He sends prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors to preach the word, to bind up the saints through the work of the ministry, to build up the church with the word so that she grows in full, in full maturity in Christ and is not blown around by every new and exciting teaching that whispers into our ears. God sent the prophet Isaiah. He sent John the baptizer. He sends preachers today. He does not always send the one we think that we want, but he always sends the one we need. And when God's preachers have preached God's word, it is the mouth of the Lord that has spoken. That's the word that the prophet Isaiah is sticking into our ears this morning. That we read that first lesson this morning. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. And it is there that we have life and salvation. For man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And yet the problem we often have is that when, we, when God speaks, he sometimes seems to be talking out of both sides of his mouth. We have a problem with, with it because we like things neat and tidy, orderly and logical. We have trouble when God speaks to us with law and gospel, with wrath and mercy with hell and heaven, about damnation and salvation, all in one breath, by the same Spirit, in the same Bible, and sometimes even in the same verse. And that is exactly what we find here this morning, coming from the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. From the Lord's mouth comes a com comforting word. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly, lovingly, speak to the heart of the bride, and preach kind words to her. Comfort her, but do not make her comfortable. Tell her that she is forgiven. God sends his preachers to preach a comforting word. He wants to woo his bride to him with tender words. Her time of hard service has come to an end. Her exile is nearly over. The end of all things is close at hand. The day of the Lord is coming soon. Her sin has been paid for. The law no longer condemns. Christ has died, paid the punishments of our sin under law. 
she has received from the Lord's hand double for all our sins. Not just enough, but double forgiveness. That's how it is with the gospel. More forgiveness than we have sinned to forgive. Imagine that. There is no sin so great that Jesus did not pay for it on the cross. No life so wretched that God could not redeem it. You know, we often say in the hymnal, in one of most of the order of service that we have in the hymnal, that we said at the beginning, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities. That's biblical. Think about that. This is where we get real specific about sin. Why do you call yourself a poor, miserable sinner? The problem with a general confession is that we become generic sinners. But God does not deal in generalities. He deals with you. Poor, miserable sinner. That includes you, me, and seven billion other people in the world. But let us not worry about them for a minute. Let us talk about you, you specifically. Do you drag God's name through the mud? Do you love preaching and the hearing of God's word? Are you disrespectful of authority? Are you a murderer, adulterer, liar, or do you cheat? How does it go when you speak about your neighbor? Do you say everything in the kind, kindest way? Do you lost after everything that you do not have? Some do these things openly, some secretly, some outwardly, by words and deeds, others inwardly, by thoughts and desires. That should be enough to make you uncomfortable in your views for a minute. For it is not a pretty sight. Sin is an ugly thing and we are ugly with sin. And all this is the law. It is doing its condemning work in you, which is good. Now, listen to the gospel. The word of comfort that God, God brings to you through Jesus Christ by the spoken word of forgiveness. The absolution is that for all your sins, all your rebellions against God, all your turning away from Him for more than you know and are able to confess, you have received double from the Lord's hand. There is more than enough forgiveness in Jesus to cover them. Comfort my people, God says to His preachers. Bring them comfort. Tell them your time of hard service is ended. Your iniquity is forgiven. You have received double for your sins. Can it be so? Can you be certain of it? Well, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And it is speaking that word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. That a preacher is called to do. No more and no less. The identity of the voice is anonymous. Whether it is the voice of an angel, a prophet, a pastor, Saint Peter, or Saint Paul, does not matter. Only the word of the Lord matters. When the Pharisee asked John who he was, he said, a voice, nothing more. There was John's prophetic greatness. On his own, he was not worthy to untie Jesus' sandals. 
It was nothing more than a voice preaching the word of God. To hear the voice of one preaching God's word is to hear a voice from heaven. The voice calls people to prepare. Prepare the way for the Lord. When God's law is preached, the landscape is never the same. Every low place will be raised up. Every high place will be laid low. Everyone will be different. If we are proud and high and might, we will be brought down. If we have made a mountain of self-righteousness out of our good works and commandment keeping, the law will crush us. The Lord will push down everything that stands between us and our salvation. The voice calls from the wilderness to everyone without exception to repent, to be of changed mind, the religious and the unreligious, the Pharisee and the publican, the good and the bad, the moral and the immoral, those who have already repented and those who think they do not need repentance. The law paves the way for the coming of Christ. It smooths the roof place. God levels the uneven ground. He does it. We do not. Repentance is God's word, not ours. And it is speaking that word that comes from the mouth of the Lord that a preacher is called to do. No more and no less. The preacher is called to preach the word that comes from the mouth of God in all its fullness. Certainly, we preach the law to convict ourselves of our sins, to show our need for a Savior. And then we preach the gospel, the good news, to show us the Savior Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross. Yes, we preach God's word to us preachers too. The message is for us as well. Go up on high a mountain, O Zion, herald good tidings. Lift up your voice with the strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, fear not says to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. The gospel, good news, glad tidings, is the real word of God that he wanted to speak in the first place, but you were not ready for it until you knew how much you needed a Savior. That's what the gospel does for us. The law makes us understand that we need a Savior. The good news is that God is here. Here in your hearing is his word. Here in the water of baptism. Here in the bread and wine. Here in the word of absolution. Here in God, man, Jesus Christ. He's here to prepare you for the day of his coming. To raise you now from the death of your sin to new life in him as he will raise you from the dead on the last day. That is the good news that the church and her preachers are to lift up and shout to all nations, here is your God. He is the baby of Bethlehem, the man of Calvary, the crucified, risen and reigning king of kings and lord of lords. Your God is Jesus, God incarnate, a God for you. You know where he is, where he has told you he would be for you. Baptism, the word, and his supper. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Through preaching and baptizing, 
God is preparing a people for his coming. That's how John prepared Israel for the coming of Christ. That's how we are prepared for his second, second coming in glory. He comes as Lord in the law and the gospel to judge the living and the dead. He comes with his punishment and his reward to unbelief and rejection. He comes in power and might. To faith, he comes as a gentle shepherd, a shepherd who gathers and feeds his flock. For those who trust him, there is nothing to fear of his coming. His coming means salvation and life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you are you are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. You are baptized. His baptism marks you as one of his own. You are his sheep, and he is your shepherd. He will feed you. He will gather you. He will pick you up and carry you in, in those arms once extended for you on the cross. He will gently guide you through life and death to the resurrection to eternal life. You have his word on this. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. In his name, the name above all names, the only name by which we can be saved. Amen.
and the Spirit. Comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Especially we pray for Dale, Sue, Sheldon, Bogus, Geraldine, Pastor James, Anne, and Mike, Reiner, Marianne, and family. For Ridva, for Marcus, and Bristol, for Lisette, and her family. We pray also for members of Faith Church in London who are going through the same trials and tribulations. Also, we pray for those we name in our hearts and minds. Grant them healing and patience in the face of affliction, and never let them forget that you are with them. Also, support all who suffer persecution for the faith. Give your tender care to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your church is a beacon of light to a dark and dying world. Grant your church zeal in proclaiming the light of Christ to others as the day approaches, that may, many may be gathered into your kingdom and saved from wrath. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator of the world, we pray for all the families of these congregations and for those who visit us this morning. Bless those who are married, the widow, the single, the children and grandchildren, and their extended families, that they seek always the comfort of your word of forgiveness and the assurance of your presence in their life. Lord, hear your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious Father, you give us the very body and blood of your Son to eat and to drink for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Grant that we receive this great gift with thankfulness and to our everlasting benefit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Remembering those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors, we give you thanks. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and our angels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us in giving your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for our Savior, by whose sacrifice of his blood and death on the cross, all who are baptized in him are enabled by his Spirit, worthily to repent and receive forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Grant that we may faithfully eat of his body and drink of his blood, and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. This do remembrance of me. 
the same way also he took the cup of their supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
save me and buy your soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and great joy. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. Greatest God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
receive the blessings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn, 352, a few verses from that hymn number. have concluded our service this, this morning. Thank you for coming. Go out and serve the Lord. Uh, before you go, I have something to announce.